We believe that all men are created equal. To the magnificent mosaic that is America. Radio Beacon to Radio Beacon. I have a dream. Change has come to America. Believe me. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey! It's a segment of your imagination. Randy Rhodes Show. Turn up your mind. Well, we've got baseball and hockey about to start up in another month or so. Probably a good time for me to try to squeeze in some vacation time before the sports schedule gets real busy again. For my money, there's no better place to go for a quick getaway than Lake of the Ozarks. It is so relaxing down there, especially on a holiday weekend when there's only a couple thousand boats on top of each other. But at least the boaters and the jet ski drivers remain sober at all times and almost never have any accidents that could have been avoided. I really like it when somebody puts a cigarette boat designed for racing on an ocean right there in the middle of the lake. You can hear it all the way to Sykeston, and on a clear day, you can see them down in Joplin when they go airborne. Hey, those party boats are fun, and some of the songs and the dance moves from the 90s are just now reaching that area. There's just so much to do at the lake, like tubing, that's always a good time. But if I'm a little low on cash and can't afford to rent the boat or pay the bill at the urgent care center, I can be happy to just stand in the water and do some noodling. Drag a big old nasty catfish out of the shallow water. There's absolutely nothing about this that screams Hoosier. You never feel more like a blue-blooded aristocrat than when you've caught a 50-pound catfish by the lips. And I find it to be so relaxing to spend some time on the bass boat with my fishing buddies, even when the motor dies. <laughs> what happened? Doug Unplugged. Oh! <laughs> that is a Missouri local TV reporter. That was his 4th of July holiday weekend, uh, you know, a recommendation. So... <laughs> Yeah, it's a holiday weekend, everybody. Oh, oh! Yeah, it's a holiday weekend, but you can't do anything. We're not free to do anything. So I was curious, like, what it, What are your plans? What are your plans? Because the President of the United States is planning on two super spreader events. That's what he's going to do for the holiday weekend. He will be um, at Mount Rushmore <laughs> in South Dakota today for fireworks, which has environmentalists just alarmed and also uh, American uh, Indians, the tribes, the Sioux tribe, the Lakota tribe, just beside themselves, pissed off, angry, as they should be. Uh, because they are in the area where the spread will actually occur, and Mount Rushmore belongs to them. So this is fascinating. I mean, this man is, uh, you know, the president of the United States for the 4th of July. He's literally, got, he's got the trifecta of pissing people off. He really does. I mean, it's just so unbelievable. He's He's got Mount Rushmore in South Dakota for fireworks. Then he's going to the D.C. Mall for another huge unmasked gathering on Saturday. Just in case you keep a list of the super spreader events, right? And, uh, you know, uh, it's, 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 it's like he's pissed off environmentalists. He's pissed off the health experts. And he's pissing off... Uh, Native American tribes. The trifecta of fun for Donald Trump is, uh, you know, because we have a president, as you know, who strives to do his very best <laughs> to bring Americans together in the ICU is where we're all going. So I want you to try and enjoy the holiday weekend. I don't. I have no earthly idea, like uh, what your plans are. It just depends. Are you as dumb as Trump? Because it could be a contest. It could really be a contest. You know, uh, we 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 could have uh, you know no mask wearing requirements at every Fourth of July event that we could think of, and just have a contest to see who is as dumb as Trump. Who's willing to die for him? Who who really wants to be jumped into the cult of death? It's just, I mean, it, it, it's like uh, the whole thing is to see who is is literally as dumb as Donald Trump and as loyal to Donald Trump as, you know, uh, a nature. Will, I mean, Herman Cain, come on. To, you heard about Herman Cain, 999. Herman Cain, uh, his temperature is over 999. Herman Cain is hospitalized with COVID because he went to the Tulsa rally is what happened to him. Herman Cain. 
I, you know, listen, I don't know. Uh, you know, he said he tried on a mask a couple of days ago, and he said we all saw it, which people now believe that they all saw it because <laughs> he said it. This is what I'm saying. Are you as dumb as this man? But he said it made him look like the Lone Ranger. Everything with him is I alone. He's the Lone Ranger. Now he's calling himself the Lone Warrior. Hey, maybe he could play for the Washington, uh, you know, football team, which is about to change its name, right? The Lone Warrior. Uh, it just made me think because um, it, it, it looks like there's been pressure put upon old Danny Snyder, you know, to rename his team to stop pissing off and to stop being, uh, you know, like uh, naming your team um, in such a denigrating way, uh, the Washington Redskins. So it looks like, you know, they got together, the investors got together and uh, they told FedEx, because, you know, they play at FedEx Field there, and it looks like uh, investors got together and sent, you know, like letters to um, Fred Smith, over at FedEx and told him, you have to pressure Danny Snyder to change the name of the Washington Redskins. And we have to, and, and you know, we've had this conversation before, but it seems like the moment might be right for them to rename, you know, uh, and if that's right. So I'm mulling over names, the new names. And now, of course, you know, the Warriors is, uh, you know, but they could call it the Lone Warriors and, you know, be uh, in league with the Donald Trump. They could call them you know, I mean, if it's Dan Snyder, they, they would probably end up calling him the Washington Caucasians. Do you know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, if they wanted to ingratiate themselves to Trump, the Washington Orange, you know, Orange Skins, just change it a little bit. Or the Washington White Privileges, that'll, <laughs> that'll, he can go dig right into what he knows. <laughs> the Washington Crackers. <laughs> Because they crumble every time under pressure, do you know? I mean, there's so many good names for them. So many, you know, you could just, it's, but it's Dan Snyder. So I'm thinking like the Washington Crackers, the Washington Honkies, the Washington Caucasians. I like Brett's Washington White Privileges. <laughs> just cut it short, the Washington White Boys. I don't know. I don't know what they're going to call them. Just plain old skins would be all right, you know? But I, I'm partial to, um, Washington Swamp Monsters, and then FedEx could be, FedEx Field could become the swamp, and you could have a whole theme, you know, and still honor Donald Trump. <laughs> or you could just shorthand the whole thing, call him the Insane Clown Posse. You know, it's always my favorite name. <laughs> that has to be the best band name. That and uh, Embers of Corona, the Washington Embers of Corona, the Washington Coronas. <laughs> Yes, we have a president who's trying to bring us all together at the ICU. <laughs> I'll see you at the ICU is basically the new Trump slogan. You know, that goes right along with his Nazi, uh, you know, uh, uh, oh, maybe Dan Snyder could take the Nazi eagle that Trump is using for the Trump 2020 campaign. And, you know, instead of Trump 2020 in the circle where the swastika used to be, he could just put, um, you know, like Trump's face and go with the orange. Washington orange is. Oranges. <laughs> this country is... Would the bloated idiots be too overt? Is that not... <laughs> the pie holes. <laughs> Washington pie holes. <laughs> with the, in the circle, that's what it is. Oh, that's what it is, Brett. That's what it is. In the circle, over the Nazi eagle... Then you got the, the circle that where the swastika used to be, and now you just put the, the pie hole, the, the, the Donald Trump mouth. The Donald Trump pie hole. <laughs> That's perfect. That's it. That's oh! I'm going with that. The Washington pie holes. <laughs> and and we, we renamed FedEx Field the Swamp, and we play in the swamp. I love this. <laughs> I mean, I, I just, this weekend, it scares me. It just does. 7,500 people are going to be at Mount Rushmore pissing off everybody. You know, the, the reason why we don't have fireworks at Mount Rushmore goes back 10 years. It's because fireworks cause wildfires. <laughs> so, but yeah, here we are. Here we are. All things Randy at RandyRhodes.com. Go, go for launch. Speaking truth to power, the Randy Rhodes Show.
People don't like to wear masks, especially a lot of my people. And I mean, hell, I kind of understand it. You think I like having to cover up this glorious lip ornament everywhere I go? <laughs> no. But what's worse, they get offended when you wear a mask. Two of my buddies from back home have told me separate stories about being accosted at the gas station for having a mask on. It's enraging. I told my friends the next time that happens at the gas station, just light up a cigarette and blow the smoke right in her Nancy Grace face, see how she likes that. It's kind of the same principle, right? When we tell people they can't smoke inside, it's not because anyone cares if they kill themselves by breathing dumbly. It's because everyone else should not be forced to share their air. <laughs> But I don't know why I'm wasting time trying to make these arguments. They're never going to listen to it. But I do think there might be a way to sell conservatives on masks, though. I really do. The main trick I think conservatives are missing with masks is that masks afford them an exciting new opportunity to pursue one of their very favorite pastimes, shoving their opinions in strangers' faces. <laughs> Think about it, conservatives. If you want to shove your opinions in strangers' faces out in public right now, what are your options? Kind of limited, right? MAGA hat? Sure. Simple, straightforward. <laughs> you want to get a little more complex? Maybe a t-shirt with like some crossed revolvers behind a skull and a racist interpretation <laughs> of the Second Amendment, something like that, right? Those are kind of your only options. That, and of course, bumper stickers. Conservatives, who among you doesn't love a horrifically offensive cartoon bumper sticker, right? <laughs> Well, here's what you're not understanding about masks. Masks are just bumper stickers for your face. <laughs> See, look at that, look there. Now your mouth can own the lips without even opening itself. <laughs> huh? And it, you can be whatever you want. Look at this one, look at that. Hell, I like that one, I'd wear that one. That's pretty sweet, right? You know you want that, you want that. <laughs> And if slogans ain't really your thing, I get it, buddy. Words are hard. I know. Uh. It don't have to be that. It could be graphics. It could be pictures. It could be whatever you want. If you want like an elephant garroting a donkey with a rolled up American flag, you sick f you can totally do that. That's fine. You can do that. If you want something a little more fun, maybe Donald Trump with a bald eagle standing back to back, holding up two solid gold glocks like that right there. You know, why not? Give mask a shot. Don't, you don't even have to call them mask. Don't call them mask anymore. Call them you flash for all we care. <laughs> Flash for all your conservative friends. Just <laughs> give it a shot for the love of God. Try it out. Who knows? You might like it. <laughs> Trey Crowder. <laughs> so our friend Trey Crowder, he nailed it. He freaking nailed it. I mean, it, he, this is this is exactly what exactly what is needed. Okay. I don't know if you know this, but the Surgeon General, Jerome Adams, actually said that if masks were mandatory, many people would rebel. <laughs> they would rebel because if, if, if you tell people that they must do something, the Trump supporters will do the exact opposite thing, right? And so he's so so you know take the whole rebel thing you know all the way just take it all the way because then the Trump people should they win again they will erect statues to you and name you know bases in your honor <laughs> so you know just face flaps everybody there just do what Trey said just call them face flaps and 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 put glocks on them or something like that put the put the Trump Nazi eagle across and you know he's right you know the Nazi eagle logo with the circle underneath instead of the swastika if you put the pie hole of Donald Trump in there but you took the eagle wings and you added two gold glocks now that would be a mask that everybody in the deep 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 south would wear right I can't believe that he's saying if you if you if if you make something mandatory and then he added particularly younger age groups <laughs> they will rebel and do the exact uh, what age groups are you talking about general surgeon general you have to call Jerome uh, the surgeon general you got to call him general Jerome uh, what age because I mean, you're talking about toddlers you're talking about a two-year-old sit still now I mean, you're talking about a toddler over here. Holy crap. You know, I, 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 I swear to God, you know, this, 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 why don't you just take the mask, take, the, take the, the face flap and put it right over your eyeballs. Just put it right over your eyes like the Lone Ranger, which is what Donald Trump was saying. It made him look like the Lone Ranger. No wonder he put the mask over his eyeballs is what he did. That's how stupid he is. They didn't even give me eye holes. I didn't even get any eye hole. Oh, shut your pie hole. He probably thinks because he wore the mask like the Lone Ranger, he probably thinks that masks make you invisible. <laughs> 
This is where we are, people. It's a holiday weekend. It is the saddest birthday America has ever, ever had. And I am going to enjoy myself. I'm taking Monday off is what I'm doing. And you know me. I don't take no stinking days off. But I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I don't know what my plans are going to be. I have no idea. But I'm taking Monday off because... This could be my last long weekend on this earth. Because this man doesn't just do one thing wrong. He does several things wrong at a time. You know, fireworks at Mount Rushmore. We haven't had them for a decade because they pose a wildfire risk, a fire danger. And it's an insult to Native Americans. And it overturns a policy from the Obama administration. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Obama made the call that we don't do fireworks in the Black Hills because of the fire danger back in 2010. So this is the trifecta over here. This is a man who uh, multi multitasks doing the wrong thing like nobody else. And you know what? Let's just go ahead and put Donald Trump on Mount Rushmore. Yeah, let's do it. He, he's got this, this fantasy that he, and so do his supporters, that one day, by hook or by crook, Donald Trump is going to be up there with the greats. He's going to be up there with the Lincolns. He's going to be up there with the father of our country. He's going to be up there. So you know what? Let's just get ourselves some jackhammers and dynamite and blast that pie hole right into Mount Rushmore and the Black Hills to show what a freaking farce that place is. No, what would do it better than that? Nothing. Nothing. Yes, put Donald Trump on Mount Rushmore and show what a travesty the whole thing is. There, I solved it. Dean in L.A. Wow, uh, Randy. Yeah. Happy July 3rd. <laughs> <laughs> is this Dependence Day or? It's Interdependence Day. Interdependence Day. We all rely on each other. Yes. Uh, yeah, California is... Uh, is that inter I, I, or is that intra? In, in, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Playing word games. Um, any. My head. No. no. <laughs> well, you don't have to stop. Uh, uh, actually, I, I was going to go on a whole other <laughs> topic, but you kind of stole my... Uh, about the name of the, the Redskins. Oh. I grew up on Stanford campus when I was a kid. Yeah. And I, so my dad was a professor there. And... Uh, which, you know, immediately makes me a uh, bleeding, stinking liberal. Yes. You know that. Oh, yes, but, by blood, uh, by blood. Especially the educated one. That's even worse. And uh, they changed their name from, of course, there's a lot of controversy about the Stanford Indians. Uh, so I was there when they changed the name from Stanford Indians, and it became Stanford Cardinal. Oh, that's which, pretty. You know, they had to keep on uh, then backpedaling. No, 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 not the bird, the color. <laughs> the color. But when a cardinal is near, the spirits are here. That's good. Call in, connect. To speak to Randy. Call 561-270-3844. 561-270-3844. History and culture, <laughs> so important. We are living in a time that's as evil as any time that there has ever been. You know, when I was a young man, I studied medieval times. That's what they did. They chopped off heads. The Continental Army suffered a bitter winter of Valley Forge. Our army manned the air. It ran the ramparts. It took over the airports. It did everything it had to do. People don't realize, you know, the Civil War, you think about it. Why? Why? People don't ask that question. They don't. But why was there the Civil War? Why could that one not have been worked out? <laughs> uh, people don't realize, you know, if you go back to the Civil War, it was the Republicans that really did the thing. So Robert E. Lee was a great general, and Abraham Lincoln developed a phobia. Honest Abe. I wonder if he was really that honest, but you know what? Let's assume Honest Abe was Honest Abe. But Lincoln had almost developed a phobia because he was having a hard time with a true great fighter and a great general, Robert E. Lee. He was going crazy. I don't know if you know this, General Grant. The great 
General Ulysses S. Grant. Ulysses. He went in and he knocked the hell out of everyone. <laughs> he had a serious problem, a serious drinking problem. But man, was he a good general. And he's finally being recognized as a great general. Frederick <laughs> Doug Douglass is an example of somebody who's done an amazing job and is being recognized more and more, I notice. Had Andrew Jackson been a little bit later, you wouldn't have had the Civil War. He was really angry that he saw what was happening with regard to the Civil War. He said, there's no reason for this. <laughs> and remember one thing, because I always consider him to be a true great, and people never give us credit for this. Abraham Lincoln was a Republican, right? They always said nobody got treated worse than Lincoln. I believe I am treated worse. This is who we want our history lessons. We want it from Donald Trump. We want history lessons on why we fought the Civil War because nobody asked that question. Nobody don't, nobody ever asked. Why couldn't that have been worked out? I don't understand. Why couldn't it have been worked out? <laughs> Ulysses S. Grant. Oh, I, I just, and, and this is what his speech is going to be about tonight. I swear to God you can't make this uh, swell up. You just, you just, I could try but it wouldn't be as funny as the truth of him. He's going there tonight to talk about how we're destroying our heritage by tearing down statues of losers and traitors. I swear to God, that's why he's going. This is what the speech is going to be about. It isn't going to be about making America safer from a pandemic or stronger. No, it's going to be bringing everybody together in the ICU while telling them that the Civil War could have been worked out and Abraham Lincoln was phobic. I mean, what? I, this is, listen, if you insist on going to these super spreader things, if you insist on, on, you know, I know that you are the people who are still upset about helmet laws. I get it. I get you're still peeved about seatbelts and fluoridated water. I understand you. I used to live with you. But if you're going to get sick, can't you just eat some expired red striped bologna and just not take everybody with you? Why are you so insistent that everybody has to die? Just just let your tuna salad go bad. When the milk gets chunky, down it. These are people that if the government made it illegal to wear a plastic bag on your head, millions of people would suffocate at suffocation rallies this weekend, okay? They would be gasping for air inside their grocery bags while holding assault rifles, trying to shoot other grocery bags. This makes no sense, right? Right. But this is who they are. And they are going to a super spreader event, two of them, this weekend. It's not just that we have the stupidest reality TV star in the history of stupid reality TV stars as our president, it's that if, you know, if nobody would listen to him, he would go away. But there are millions of people in the am I as dumb as Trump contest. There are millions of Americans who are part of a death cult and they want to take you with them. And that's where I draw the line. That's where I draw the line. They're taking us down the drain. They're draining us, as you know. They didn't drain the swamp, they're draining us. And I'm tired of it. Mike Pence wrote an op-ed in the Wall Street Journal two weeks ago that said, our handling of the pandemic has been a cause for celebration at a super spreader event. Chris in Arizona. Yeah, how you doing, Randy? Hey, how's it going over there? Fine, it's kind of rough, but let me, I, I'm pretty well known as Curtis on the Tim Black show. He's a progressive guy that does a show, <laughs> and he knows me pretty well. They call hence, me Curtis, but anyhow. Hence the name uh, Tim Black show. He's Tim Black. Yeah, Tim, he's, a, he's a progressive. He's a Bernie Sanders guy. He's pretty bright, pretty bright. 
Anyhow, I wanted to contact you in regards to Jen Purvin. She's a, an attorney over on the other coast of you that's running against Debbie Wasserman Schultz. And she's a very good progressive, very brilliant girl. She wanted to get on your show. What? And what are you, what are you talking show. about? What are you making up now? What, what, her, what? her name is Jen Perman. She's a licensed attorney running against Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Oh. For the 23rd District over there on the other coast. Received and she's a progressive. Well, she's I've, a, she's I've, pretty bright. I've, I've received zero, uh, you know, contact from her. Right. Well, I was wanted to talk about, do you really think the presidents of this nation actually run the com- country? Do you really think they run the country? Uh, I, I think that if you see what this president is doing, you can see the firing of uh, inspector generals, the firing of U.S. attorneys. You can see, uh, you know, the pardoning of criminals. I think you could see, you know, exactly what a president's power is. In other words, so, but do you think they run all the policies? You don't think the government runs itself to some extent, and the multinationals that so have are you, lobbyists are you that saying, have been rooted in there for over saying, 100 years? Are you saying that the president doesn't matter? Who, who the president is does the not matter? The president matters, but, but okay, do you really so think he runs why, all the policies? Why are you asking me this if you know the president matters? Because it doesn't. Because it doesn't? It's a Rockefeller Wait, does he matter or it's doesn't he by, matter? It's financed by the Rothschilds, and it's managed by uh, Goldman Sachs. Uh, That's who uh, runs America. All the other people don't matter. What are the people going to wake up? So the, the Supreme Court. Run it. The Look su- at the script. So the Who, Supreme, where does the script come from? So, you guys- so the Supreme Court doesn't matter. Okay. All right. Can I just say, Chris oh. is my worst nightmare doing this. Why? He wanted he to talk about talk, defu- talk. He said, hey, Brett, I want to talk about defunding the police. Is that a good idea? Okay, great, Chris. You know, these are uh, these are crazy people who don't understand that, yes, it matters who the president is because the president's going to make uh, you know his nominations for the Supreme Court, right? And the Supreme Court's going to decide whether money is speech. Hence, your little theory that money makes uh, America go round, true. But that's because of who the president is. This is the Randy Rhodes Show. To speak with Randy, dial 561-270-3844. That's 561-270-3844. We weren't allowed any rights. We had, for the first time in the history of our country, we had virtually no rights, no due process. So the great tariff debate of 1888, (laughs) we had so much money, we could do whatever we wanted. Then in 1913, they ended tariffs, okay? Somebody got stupid. And they ended tariffs. And then in 1928, (laughs) you had the Great Depression. In the 28. For a lot of different reasons, not necessarily our country's fault, but a little bit our country's fault. (laughs) And I mean, people forget that at that time, Hitler was virtually unstoppable. He was going through countries like cheese. America built the Empire State Building in just one year. They did. Believe it or not, in nine months. Can you believe that? They say a wall is medieval. Well, so is a wheel. A wheel is older than a wall. The wheel is older than the wall. You know that? During a heated phone conversation with Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau regarding tariffs, Trump asked, quote, didn't you guys burn down the White House? Trump was apparently referring to the War of 1812, which was fought against the British. The British burned down the White House, the original White House in 1814. The British. We have to understand our past. We have to understand our history. Because if we don't know our history, it could all happen again. Have to know our history. Oh, for God's sake. Oh, my God. We're going to be lectured by him tonight about monuments and statues because he's going for the anti-statuary vandalism base, <laughs> which is like, I don't know, 100 people. I, I I don't know what his deal is. Do you think he still wants to be president? Probably he does. But anyway, for these uh, Rothschild conspiracy folks, why are you fighting with me when I'm the one that keeps telling you? that the Supreme Court, when they declared that money was speech and corporations are people, uh, this is when all of you should have woken up and realized that there are a handful of people who are literally running this country and you ain't one of them. You don't have to go all the way deep into a, 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 you know, a conspiracy theory that's been around for years, okay? But apparently these conspiracy theories 
don't understand that when the president is the president, he nominates people to the Supreme Court who will say money are people, money is speech, and corporations are people, my friend, that you are literally taking your conspiracy and ignoring it. <laughs> I mean, you are. It's just right in front of your face. And apparently, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the people with the money don't want you to vote because they're spending $20 million in court now to not let you vote by mail. The Republican National Committee is putting $20 million into court cases. And there are literally dozens and dozens and dozens of court cases right now about whether or not we can vote remotely, you know, like uh, by mail in a pandemic. And the Republicans say no. The Republicans are, so if you want to know like who is part of that, look at the people who don't want you to vote. Look at the people who say money is speech. Look at the people who say corporations are people, my friend. There's your problem. There's your enemy. That is your theory actually in practice. So why do you denigrate what's really happening by going back to some ancient theory and making yourself sound stupid? We need campaign finance reform in this country. We need public funding of presidential campaigns. The idea that it takes a billion dollars to be president ought to just stop you from vomiting at the mouth some dumbass thing that makes people want to run away from you instead of listen to the real issue, which is money in politics, period. So stop yelling at me. I'm in a good mood. Down in New York. Hey, Randy. Hey. We're up here enjoying your program. Uh, I always like to make sure I get off the riding mower and come in and watch your, you know, watch your program. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, right now, yeah, we lost. We're having a bad thunderstorm, so we lost the signal, and the dog ran to the bathroom. Uh, I wanted to. He hunkers down in there during a thunderstorm. Uh, I wanted to make a comment about Mount, uh, Mount Rushmore. Uh, you know, so Trump goes there, sets off the fireworks, start a fire. You have a lot of black smoke. And, and soot and stuff, and where does it go on the faces of the four white guys up there? So you have four white guys in blackface. <laughs> that's so sick. <laughs> so that's one thing that could happen. A decades ago, I worked in uh, Outer Rapid City Airport, and I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> they, got, they had a, uh, at that time, they had a dedicated uh B B seventeen because this is this is in the seventies B seventeen bomber that was stationed there in the summer and you know I was the World War II buff so I'd go out and look at it and it was dedicated uh, as a firefighting airplane and it stayed there for the months during the summer because that's how bad the fires were. Yeah, out there. that's right, that's right. I mean, it's, it's, it's he's going to do a flyover tonight too. There will be a flyover. <laughs> Oh, yeah. They can see the fires and you're I just, playing over I, it. I, I, I hope it's, uh, you know, uh, with the orange, uh, you know, stuff to put the fire out, whatever that is. All right. All right. I have a quick question for you. Yes, sir. I forced myself to watch something on right-wing radio or TV. Oh, and no. So I, I, I did. Yes, yes. Just one program. Uh, but I will watch you, Steve Bannon. And I wanted to ask you how much power influence i mean his guy is in the voice of america now so i don't know if he had anything to do with that i'm yes, sure he, he did donald trump uh, you know hated voice of america he said it was the enemy of the people right the people on voice of america had to go and so he put one of his cronies in charge of voice of america you know and so that's that's how well, that happened yeah well the pro the pro on program one of his henchmen said that the voice of america was infested with uh, communists, right? And their big thing seems to be for the last. I, I stopped watching this week. I had to take a break. Everything is the CCP, everything, and, and aligned with Antifa and elements of Black Lives Matter. I see. Uh, the mm. you know that's the whole thing, and that's where being attacked by those two things. And uh, huh. it, it's really kind of incredible. It is incredible when the you one... think about who Donald Trump loves the most in this world, okay? He loves every autocrat on this planet. Vladimir Putin is now president for life in Russia. China has just taken over Hong Kong, right? And so there's no freedom in right. Hong Kong. Communism is spreading all over Poland. Uh, you know, you got uh, the, the, the uh, Victor Orban, white supremacist in Poland now. Uh, you got uh, Prince Salman, who paid $500 million to get our troops 
relocated to protect him and Trump takes his money and puts our troops there. You know, you got uh, the Russians uh, paying to, to uh, he loves these commies. He loves communism. Yeah. He loves- I wonder, I don't, I wonder if it's more like though, these guys are in Eastern Europe and uh, Putin, I wonder if it's more fascism. Yeah, I, I, I said, I, I know, I know. I don't know if it's going to be, you know, fascism or because, a hybrid. Yeah, the communist thing, uh, you know, I mean, Stalin was, <laughs> he's a, quote, a communist. He's a dictator. Yeah, you know, yeah. He enjoyed himself. It's just, you he, know, the wrappings. But I mean, these, these guys, guys they killed tw- he killed 20 million people. He killed his own people, 20 million of them. Stalin. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, that was... Uh, his own collateral people. damage to the great So now, now you look and you see like, you know, 130,000 dead Americans and you say he's got a long way to go to catch up with Stalin, right? But it, this is like, right, right. it's amazing what's going on. And people literally are sitting there going, eh, it's just uh, 130,000. I'm going to a super spreader event. You know, I'm just doing it. I'm, I'm going. <laughs> well, we'll see what happens at Mount Rushmore. Yeah. Uh, it was, you know, I mean, that's, uh, that's. It can it can really go out there. Yeah. I mean, they they had some serious problems even decades ago. I know. And uh, I know. Yeah, you know, back I, then, uh, one other quick thing. Back then, uh, in the seventies, uh, I lived in South Dakota for a while. They did. And the Pine Ridge Reservation had the highest murder rate in the United States, and that's why you know the uh, the siege at uh, you know Pine Ridge went on and stuff like that. But it was it was really bad. They had uh, some people running it. It was sort of appointed by, you know, the powers that be in South Dakota, and they ran that thing like like a uh, a mafia protectorate, and uh, so that led to anyway. So yeah, as this stuff like that's been going on for a long time. For out a long there, time, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. All well, right, thank you. We love your show. Oh, thank you. Enjoy your riding mower, and uh, you know, stay stay. Well, that's uh, <clears throat> I enjoy getting off of it. Ah, I enjoy getting off, too. Okay. <laughs> Small world. Okay. All right, bye-bye. Yeah, so uh, let's watch Mount Rushmore uh, and the Black Hills Mountains uh, catch fire tonight. Is basically, But there will be airplanes in it, so they, I'm, I'm assuming they're ready to put out the fires that this man sets, right? They'll call the fi- embers of corona. Just per- he's the fireman. He said that yesterday. Yesterday he said he's putting out the fires, the embers, the embers of corona. Holy crap. This is just just a disaster waiting to happen. Fireworks and all that hairspray. What could go wrong? (laughs) I don't know. Enjoy the weekend. Mary, how does the book man, man, man? The fault. We believe that all men are created equal. To the magnificent mosaic that is America. From radio beacon to radio beacon. I have a dream. Change has come to America. Believe me. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey! That's a segment of your imagination. The Randy Road Show. Turn up your mind. Another record-setting day for new coronavirus cases in the United States, as the CDC made this startling prediction ahead of the holiday weekend, projecting 19,000 more people could die from the disease by July 25th. But at the White House, a different message from President Trump. This uh, is being handled. We have some areas where we're putting out the flames or the fires, and that's working out well. Now we're opening it up, and it's opening up far faster than anybody thought even possible, and more successfully. Now, 36 states are seeing increases in new weekly infections this morning. Dr. Anthony Fauci says that is extremely worrisome. It's quite disturbing. And we're setting records practically every day of new cases in the numbers that are reported. That clearly is not the right direction. For weeks, governors in Arizona, Florida, and Texas resisted issuing mandatory mask orders. Mm. But on Thursday, Texas Governor Greg Abbott issuing an executive order requiring them in every county with 20 or more active cases. That covers about 95% of the state's population. Texas adding nearly 8,000 new cases Thursday. And healthcare providers are asking residents to stay home this weekend as hospitals become overwhelmed with patients. In Texas, you know, we were worried about fuel being dumped on that fire over the weekend. 
we actually have a chance to have it be more like a, a garden hose starting to hit the fire and actually slowing things down. This order really helps that happen tremendously. Intensive care units in Arizona are at nearly 90 percent capacity. Huh. Governor Ducey asking the federal Ducey. government to send 500 additional medical personnel to help. Mm. Our positivity rate is ridiculously high. 25 percent of the people in the state who get tested test positive. Holy that is way crap. higher than the 5 percent threshold. And that's just the cases that are happening right now. Ducey temporarily pausing Arizona's reopening plan. Florida also doing the same, with no signs of the spread slowing down statewide. The Sunshine State recording more than 10,000 new positive cases, oh! a record high. Oh. Governor Ron DeSantis defending his leadership <laughs> when pressed on whether he takes responsibility for the increases. I don't think anyone predicted a sunbelt resurgence in mid-June, <laughs> but we had the infrastructure in place um, and we're a much better place to be able to, uh, to deal with this. At the same briefing in Tampa, Dr. Deborah Burks sending this message to Floridians under 40. But if you've participated in a large gathering in the last four weeks, we ask all of you to come forward and be tested because of the level of asymptomatic spread. Get in line, everybody. Get in line. The lines for testing are hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. And I just want you to know, we are America first. We are first, we are first in COVID cases. We have set the global record, everybody. We set the global record, 55,000 cases in one day yesterday. 55,000 cases. Brazil had the previous record, Brazil. Bolsonaro, that's who our president is, right? Uh, 54,771 on June 19th, Brazil, Brazil. Uh, this is just so unbelievable. Coronavirus virus cases are rising in 37 of the 50 states. Texas, uh, 8,000. California, up 56%. By the numbers, Arizona, your positivity rate. Now, here, here's what the CDC recommendations were, just so you know what douchey did to you, Arizona. The CDC guidelines said that you were not to open until until your positivity rate was going down below 10% and your cases were going down for 14 straight days. That was the recommendation, okay? And Arizona actually has a 25% positivity rate, meaning one out of every four people that gets a coronavirus test actually has coronavirus. In the last seven days, they've diagnosed almost 26,000 people, okay? That is unbelievable. California, uh, you got 49,584 with a 7% positivity rate. Florida, 17% positivity rate, 55,000 cases. Numbers for hospitalizations, Florida wouldn't release. They wouldn't release. Finally, they started to release some of the numbers of the currently hospitalized. We know there's somewhere around 15,000 people. Our ICU units are somewhere in the neighborhood of 80% full. We still don't have a mask, a mandatory mask order. Georgia, Brian Kemp, who cheated as Secretary of State to elect himself over Stacey Abrams. Okay, this man... 13% positivity rate, 17,000 cases in the last week. North Carolina, 13,000 cases in the last week. Positivity rate is somewhere between 6 and 7%. South Carolina, 11,306 cases in this past week, 15% positivity rate. 14% positivity rate in Texas with 50,000 new cases in just this last week with 100% capacity in your ICUs. Have fun, everybody. And whatever you do, don't require any medical help this weekend. Like, don't have a heart attack, you know, because when you're at 100% capacity, what happens is if you have a heart attack and the EMTs can't revive you right there in your own house or wherever you uh, collapse, they just, uh, you know, call it. They pronounce you dead. They don't bring you to the hospital and, you know, because they can't. They just can't. So don't let anything, you know, medically, you know, uh, happen to you. Never mind the COVID. No room at the end, you see. No room. So I just want you to know that with all this going on, all of this going on, some guy just calls up the show, and he's got, you know, Brett is like super, super, super cool. He's kind. He's cool. He's polite. 
he's just, uh, you know, he amazes me every single day. So some guy calls him up and says, I want to get on the show. And he says, okay, what do you want to talk about? He said, I want to tell Randy to take that microphone. I, I, no, he said, I want to take that microphone and shove it up her ass, is what he said. But you won't let me on the air to tell her that. And Brett said, if you don't swear and you just pick a topic, I'll put you on the air, which is what we tell everybody. Just don't swear and pick something you want to talk about, right? And he said, um, well, I want to tell her to take, I want to take that microphone in. And he said, well, just don't swear and pick a topic. He goes, oh, all right, I'll pick a topic. And then he thought about it for a minute and he said, no, I want to threaten her. I want to threaten her. And Brett said, just don't swear and don't threaten her and we'll put you on the air. So pick something you want to talk about. Mm, no, I want to threaten her. And he hung up. <laughs> this is the caliber of Trump supporter we deal with, okay? So I just want to tell you, um, Mr. Death Cult, 45, I have your phone number. I don't know why you think I don't. The entire universe has caller ID. The entire universe. When you call somebody, your phone number comes up. Do you know that? <laughs> are, you, are you insane? No, I, I really, I feel strongly. I feel strongly about, I want to threaten her. <laughs> I just, I feel very strongly about it. <laughs> Brett is like really kind. And he's, he's like, he doesn't even play that card with people. He doesn't even tell them, look, I'm looking at your phone number. Can I tell you that was on the more rational end of the Trumpster <laughs> calls? Seriously. <laughs> oh. I'm scared. You're scaring me. Why don't you just go to Mount Rushmore and take a deep breath and all your problems will be solved for you. All of them will just vaporize into the ether and you won't have to worry about me or my microphone or any of my things. Why are you obsessing on my things? Just go out, don't wear a mask, and breathe deep. Go lick something. <laughs> just go go where people, you know, go. why don't you just go into the ER and sit there for a little while without a mask and stop worrying about me. All things Randy at RandyRhodes.com. Go, go. Speaking truth to power, the Randy Rhodes Show. What we've seen over the last several days is a spike in cases that are well beyond the worst spikes that we've seen. That is not good news. We've got to get that under control or we risk an even greater outbreak in the United States. When you look at the fact that we never got things down to baseline, where so many countries in Europe and the UK and other countries did, they closed down to the tune of about 97% lockdown. In the United States, even in the most uh, strict lockdown, only about 50% of the country locked down. That allowed the perpetuation of the outbreak uh, that we never did get under very good control. You've been losing this battle, haven't you, recently? Admittedly, yes, we have. Huh. We cannot give up because it appears that we're losing the battle. We've got to continue to try to educate people, but not in a way where you look down on them, but to try them to get them to understand the importance of evidence. Yeah, good luck with that, Fauci. Uh, the importance of evidence, the importance of science. <laughs> I want to threaten her. Threaten me on Twitter, at Randy Rhodes. Go ahead, threaten me on Twitter. Do that. Victor in Fort Myers. Hi, Randy. Hello. How are you? I'm fine. Boy, this is the reason why Florida is a big mess. <laughs> because we got one Z man, and you know who one Z man is. He's running the show, and I don't know who's more incompetent, him or Trump. I guess they're both equally incompetent. Well, um, you know how your side of Florida which is Miami, West Palm Beach, and all that, right? Yeah. They're at least closing their beaches down for the 4th of July. Guess what we're doing over here in the predominantly, it must be very Republican on this side of Florida. 
because uh, Fort Myers, um, Naples, all their beaches, the commissioner here, which his name is Mark Hammond, said in the news that he was going to keep the beaches open for the 4th of July, and apparently he's shaming the politicians on the East Coast for closing the beaches for the 4th of July, and that his answer to everything is, open the beaches up, let everybody flock to them, and all he's going to do is put a stupid sign on the beach that says, uh, please be respectful, wear a mask, and social distance. He's, co- he's, he's COVID do. shaming people? <laughs> mm-hmm. it, said it, it said it in the news. I read it in the news. And it says, because I looked at the news yesterday, and it said that he was not going to close our beaches down, that they're going to be open for the 4th of July. And you know what's going to happen, right, Randy? Everybody on that side of Florida is going to flock over here because the beaches are open. Oh, good God. And you know what's going to be the result of that, right? We're going to probably be a super hot zone here. It's going to be like, we're going to be like Miami or worse. You know, because everybody's going to come over here. And Miami, gonna... Miami is really bad. Miami yeah. is, is in dire straits. I mean, the, nurse, the, the nurses in Miami have already begun to weep. You know, and when you start to see these, uh, you know, these, these interviews in the hospital with the nurses and they're showing you what an intubated patient looks like and they're showing you the, the, the mm-hmm. mung on the end of the tube, they're doing it to scare you, to, to stay the freak home. I don't... Exactly. So, like, if you want to die, if that's your thing, if you're really <laughs> into the whole di- I want to die for Trump and DeSantis thing, just go to the ER without a mask and sit there for an hour. Just, Thank you. Just go there. What do you need to, you know, like, screw up my air? I don't get it. Let, Like I said, let your food go bad. Leave out your burgers. Just leave them out in the hot Florida sun for, like, a day and eat them. And eat them. Exactly. What do you need to involve me for? That's what I don't understand. <laughs> what is this about? People are, Randy, people are insane. I don't know what happened. I think <laughs> it's in the water. I think they you know, drank something and they completely lost their mind. Maybe they're but shooting, I'm snorting, you. injecting a disinfectant and shoving lightsabers up their butt. I have no <laughs> or- earthly idea. But exactly. I just don't understand why why they have to, you know, include us in their, in their uh, Kool-Aid drinking. I don't, why? Why do I have to be part of it? It's crazy. I bother and, and, nobody. I'm over here, right? I, I, I Right? I bother nobody. All I do is talk, okay? That's and all I do. Truth. Yeah. The and tru- that's why that, that's okay, but so go the over there. You, you know, yeah, go over there. The <laughs> just <laughs> <laughs> he can't deal with the truth, so that's why he has to be a little. But child. he's probably armed or something. So just you know, take the gun and put it on your pallet and pull the. Tr- you know, what do you have to involve <laughs> me for? Why do I exactly need to be included in your festivities? <laughs> I don't. I never but, understood that. But, Randy, I am really terrified because, seriously, this is going to be bad. It's Nothing bad. Nothing good is going to come out of this, especially from when everybody from the East Coast starts flocking over here to come to the beach to celebrate the 4th of July, you know, and all this commissioner said is he's going to put a sign on the beach and that will protect everybody, the sign, <laughs> you know, and it just doesn't make any sense. You know, it's going to be a disaster, and like I said, After the 4th of July, we'll see what happens here on the west coast of Florida. So there's a lag. There's a lag time, as you know. I mean, what we're Uh seeing now is the result of Memorial Day. So Memorial Day was what? The end of May. So now we're the beginning of July. So July, August. So September. What a great time for Trump to have everybody, you know, like uh, riling and, uh, you know, in agony. What a great time right ahead of an election. Isn't that smart? He's just so (laughs) smart. He is a stable freaking genius. <laughs> oh, man. Like I said, I was telling a friend of mine that we really got to be careful who we put in that chair. I'm telling you. And people this still... reality TV host oh, is my God. not qualified. He is not qualified. And sometimes you have to have some qualifications to get a job. Yeah, and thanks. for some strange reason... The chair of the president is how much money you have. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, and how it has much has nothing to do with your qualifications and, or and, your mental or and, your state of no, mental. No, it doesn't. You know, they sh- it, it, they should actually have to 
like make a person have a psychological and they have to pass a psychological test to sit in that chair as part of the requirement because you could get someone insane in there. You could? And then you can't <laughs> and then you can't get them out because Mitch McConnell and his cronies, no, no witnesses. You can't get out. That's right. it. Right. We don't want to hear it. Bolton, we don't want to hear nothing from you. No witnesses. So the really survive. the really sick part of all this is that the down ballot stuff is looking as putrid as the presidential, right? The polling is so bad that there's no way unless they cheat so hard and everybody misses it, right? Okay, that, that, that probably couldn't happen, but why are they willing to go down with the ship? You know, uh, uh, it, 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 it blows my mind. It just blows my mind. Unless they've made all their money and they're done, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I agree with you, Randy. It blows my mind every day too. I'm sitting here saying, "Wow, yeah. this is what we've this is what we've come this is what we've become." Just look around you, people. Just look around you. Is yeah. this is this satisfactory to you? Is this you know what you bargain bargain for? Is this what you thought it would look like? We're on the red list. We can't travel anywhere. <laughs> Speak to Randy. Call 561-270-3844. 561-270-3844. Testing is a double-edged sword. You're going to find more people. You're going to find more cases. So I said to my people, slow the testing down, please. He consistently called the coronavirus a hoax, and he didn't do anything until he was forced to take action. His response did a number on the economy, over 20 million people out of work. He's letting over 100,000 people die due to his incompetence. Recommending medications and probe solutions. Supposing you brought the light inside the body. <laughs> he has misled the American people and mismanaged the public health effort. He has been a total failure. More than 110,000 American deaths. We're probably gonna go to 200,000. The coronavirus pandemic is far from over. We need someone who can lead. My vote is going to Joe Biden. America needs competent leadership in the White House. I'm supporting Joe Biden in 2020. I'm voting for Joe Biden. Join the growing number of Republican voters against Trump. I love this. I really love this. Rep Republican voters uh, against Trump. That is just beautiful. Beautiful. And they can just scream and yell all they want. Arizona, here's one of your representatives, Andy Biggs. Yeah, I think that Burks and Fauci have gone well past their, their they've, they've expired. Their, their time of usefulness has expired. What they do is when the president comes out and, and makes a policy, because he is the president and he is the policymaker, when they come out and they make these statements that they make, they engender panic and hysteria and undermine what the president's doing. That's what I think is critical. Doesn't he defer to them the as the health experts? The Doesn't he have a commission because he defers to them as the health experts? And they're citing worries. They're citing also that we can get this under control. It needn't be a panic if people do what they should be doing. But isn't that what doctors do, kind of look after people's lives? Well, uh, doctors do, who are treating people and meeting with them daily, and I talk to those doctors on a regular basis. When's the last time Dr. Fauci met with and treated a patient on an individual basis? Or Dr. Birch? Why? And when you start talking to people who are on the ground the working in emergency you have? rooms. When's the last time you have? I'm not a trained physician. What I am, however, is someone who can but read data and But you're telling the ones who are people. to get out, get off the commission. We don't need you. What I'm saying is what, Neil, what I'm saying is the task force may not be necessary anymore. And what I'm saying is Dr. Fauci and Dr. Birx have undermined what this president is trying to do. That right, I think you is say critical. In the middle, of, you start the, in the middle of these upticking cases, no, no, in the middle uptick. of these upticking cases, you think it's a good idea to disband <laughs> this commission now in the middle of this. Just want to be clear. No, no. What, yes, I think it's a good idea. But... <laughs> Yes, I think it's a very good idea to disband, uh, you know, the entire National Institutes of Health, the uh, CDC, the Centers for Disease Control. I think, uh, you know, we ought to just, uh, you know, ignore everything. Fauci and Burks, the, their expiration date, he couldn't even tell the freaking joke he prepared, which was they've reached their expiration date and we don't need to listen to them anymore. Uh, and they call it on fact an uptick. This is setting global freaking records. We're the only country. 
The only country, I, I will say, Brazil, you know, is uh, running a close second, right? And they're doing the same damn thing we are. No masks and, uh, you know, no uh, closings and they're leaving everything open. And Brazilians are infected. They had a, a, a world record. Well, almost a world. We had the world record. We had the world record yesterday. 55,000 new cases yesterday, right? They had 54,771. Ooh, Brazil and the United States. Just what we always wanted to be. Just what I always thought we would be. I mean, this is just so sad. So sad. And here, here is the lieutenant governor of Texas, Dan Patrick, who once said, I mean, he'll go down with the H.L. Mencken's of the world, right, is the most quotable dude in the world. But for all the wrong reasons, Dan Patrick said, there are more important things to life than living. Remember that? Remember that? There are more important things in life than living. Mm. Like I said, leave your meat out. Leave all your meats out. Leave them out for 24 hours outside. Outside. Not on the sink. Not on the counter. No, no. Take them outside. Leave them in the sun for 24 hours, your meats. And then eat them raw and leave me alone, leave us out of it. You're so anxious to die. But now he's saying he doesn't want to listen to Fauci either. Now this is interesting because Greg Abbott, who is the governor, said mandatory mask wearing in Texas for anybody who lives in a county with more than 20 cases, which is 98% of Texas, okay? But remember, the, the lieutenant, this is so weird. Texas, you are a strange, strange animal. Texas where I lived many, many times, does not vote for the governor and the lieutenant governor on the same ticket, right? So they they run separately in Texas, which is very weird. So Dan Patrick is feeling his oats. He's feeling independent. He's feeling, uh, you know, frisky. And this is what he says. Fauci said today that he's concerned about states like Texas that skipped over certain things. He doesn't know what he's talking about. We haven't skipped over anything. The only thing I'm skipping over is listening to him. You know, you have a lot of doctors on your show from day one. Your doctors have been right almost every time, and he has been wrong every time on every issue. I don't need his advice anymore. We'll listen to a lot of science. We'll listen to a lot of doctors. And Governor Abbott, myself, and other state leaders will make the decision. No thank you, Dr. Fauci. Brilliant. Smartest man. Smart. (laughs) All right, I wrote this down. This should be Tina. Yes. Okay. Randy. Yes. Oh, my God, I love you. I love you Um, more. I win. I was wondering <laughs> what happened to Lev Parnas. <laughs> All right, so Lev Parnas and Igor Fruman, Rudy Giuliani's bestest friends in the Ukraine, uh, they have postponed their trial until after the election, but this is not over. And remember, Jeffrey Berman, the U.S. attorney, uh, and that office that was investigating Rudy Giuliani, Lev Parnas and Igor Fruman, was fired by Donald Trump last Friday. Oh my gosh! Right, but the and the new woman uh, that's that replaced Jeffrey Berman is keeping these cases going, and that's why you saw Gislaine, uh, the child uh, recruiter for Jeffrey Epstein and, and pals, oh get arrested yesterday because uh, you know those cases are still going forward. Now it'd be a pity if something happened to Gislaine in Bill Barr's prison system. Just saying. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, one more thing. Mm-hmm. Nunez, why is he still in there? Because people vote for him. Oh, my God. you got, like, okay. the Confederacy of California over there voting for these people. Oh, my God. I have learned so much from you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Tina. Love you. Love you more. Bye. Again, I win. <laughs> I'm waiting for you to threaten me on Twitter. All everybody, all my people on Twitter, almost 60,000 of us are waiting for you to threaten me on Twitter. We're all here. We're all, we, we want to see, you know, what it is that's going on with you. Maybe we can help you. 
And by the way, if you don't reach out to me, reach out to like a charter hospital or one of their affiliates. Just get some help. It's the Randy Rhodes Show. To speak with Randy, dial 561-270-3844. That's 561-270-3844. Happy birthday to you. COVID cases are exploding. We have it totally under control. I said to my people, slow the testing down, please. Happy birthday to you. 15 million people have lost their jobs. I haven't worked in over three weeks. Happy birthday, America. President Trump retweeted a video showing a supporter. Happy birthday. Anthony Fauci predicting the possibility of 100,000 cases a day. I am the chosen one. Unbelievable. These are Republicans that are making these ads. Republicans are making these ads. Incredible. Just amazing. Absolutely amazing. So good luck to you, uh, Donald. (laughs) Good luck to you. All right. This is uh, Stephen Washington. Hey, Randy. Hi. I I don't know what I love more. Your rapier, brilliant wit, or your bang. <laughs> so I'm trying to decide. They are both. Um, they are equally part of me. <laughs> yeah. Um. I. I just. I have a prediction. Um. I do very strongly believe that Trump will make a joke uh, when he goes to Mount Rushmore. He will make a joke about someday being on Mount Rushmore. I'm all for it. <laughs> why <laughs> to show the the absolute travesty of stealing native american land and putting the people who stole it from you on your mountain <laughs> well okay i can see that i, I mean you talk say. about confederate flags being a, a, a you know a, a dog whistle to african americans to let them know that's why we put these statues in front of the state houses during jim crow not civil war but during jim crow we took the losers we took the the traitors to this country the people who wanted to end america and we put their statues in front of the state houses to let african american people know who is in charge you better stay in in your freaking place it's the same thing with mount rushmore that's lakota land okay and so what did they do they took the lakota land and they put the people who done it to them on their mountain so now put trump up there to show the absolute travesty of mount rushmore once and for all it's a brilliant genius plan i hear you okay okay, okay. Mm-hmm. but he's actually joked about that you know before i, I know it shows you how enormous, how incredibly huge his ego is that after all these disasters of his presidency and his low rating, that I bet he will still make that joke. Oh, there's no question. There is no, yeah. there is no question. So It's uh, going to be a fireworks display like few people have seen. Standing in the shadow of four presidents at Mount Rushmore with military flyovers and the first fireworks display at the monument in a decade, all amid a global pandemic. Critics say the event is risking (laughs) coronavirus spread among the expected 7,500 spectators. As cases continue to spike across the country, there are nearly 7,000 confirmed cases in South Dakota Mm. and 97 deaths. There will be no social distancing, but masks will be provided. We won't be social distancing. We're asking them uh, to come, be ready to celebrate, to enjoy the freedoms and the liberties that we have in this country. It's not clear how many of those 7,500 visitors will come from other places experiencing rising cases. We are concerned about the coronavirus. We want our visitors to be safe and healthy. We're very confident that we have been quite careful in analyzing the situation on how to have a safe and responsible event. 
The president once suggested to South Dakota's governor that he'd like to be the fifth face on the mountain. <laughs> and here in Trump country, people actually buy into it. One day, Donald J. Trump will be on that monument. I firmly believe. Oh, for God's sake. I'm, I'm all about it. I think that that should happen. Go get the dynamite. Go get the blasting material. Go ahead and just drill a giant pie hole into Mount Rushmore. Do it. Show how heinous a thing that is. Rich in Florida. Uh, I love your show, Randy, but uh, I'm a libertarian. I, uh, I'm a free thinker. But uh, what I wanted to bring up is some of the people in the villages, probably 90% of them are uh, Republicans. Yeah, I know. And one of the problems that, not one of the problems, but one of the things I'm hearing, uh, they're saying that, oh, let's, let's talk about population. Population in the world is about 8 million. We're 124th of the population of the world, and we have one quarter of the cases. And what a lot of people are saying now, they believe, a lot of the religious people here I'm talking to, they're saying that they believe that Trump is the Antichrist right now. Oh, see, that, 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 that makes Trump. sense because Trump's the Antichrist and they're ready to go. That's what I keep <laughs> saying. I keep telling them. Unbelievable. You, right, so why do they have to take me with them? I know. Just be raptured <laughs> out of your if you cute... Talk, if you talk to religious people, that, that's that their mentality. Good yeah, for them. God, you know, like I said, go with God. Go. <laughs> Just leave me alone. Why do what why do they feel the need to take me with them? They're supposed to be raptured, right? So just go get some cute shoes cuz that's all that will be left. It's, it's just it's just amazing and there's a church in the villages and it's just totally packed. They've got a couple of bars out here, totally packed. I mean, no no mass, nothing. And then you got a governor that's so stupid that uh, I I think it's really turning the tide right now. I think people are starting to realize, even if you're a Republican, that he's such a just a jerk off. <laughs> well, I, I do think so. I mean, there's so many commercials with the Republicans in them saying they're done, that this man has let, you know, 130,000 Americans die. He's let 55,000 a day get diagnosed. He he hasn't done anything on the testing issue. People are waiting in lines for food. They're waiting in lines for tests. They're wait I mean, we're like, you know, we used to joke about waiting in line for government cheese, right? And we used to joke about the Russians waited in line for toilet paper. And here we are. Here we I, are. I'd like to see. I'd like to see his hairdresser look behind his uh, oh. nape of his neck and see if he sees six 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 back there. Oh, <laughs> no! It probably just says MAGA. Uh, maybe MAGA is the mark of the beast. Maybe that's what it means. <laughs> I, he's got. He's got to be the Antichrist. And I, I hope. He's I just. Hope, right? You know oh, what he hope. is. You know what. You I get, hope he gets the virus. Here's the and thing. I hope he dies a horrible death. I under stop. A stop it. Stop it. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't go there. Nobody. No, nobody wishes anybody to die. He's horrible. It do- he's, he's created all these deaths. You know. I'll see you later. Bye bye. Bye bye. I mean, no. I'm not down with wishing death on anybody. They are about wishing it on me, but not. I just don't. I can't. I, uh, just not my thing. It's not my thing. But oh, these commercials are getting so so good. Uh, the uh, the, the uh, which is the one we had one with older Republicans. Which is the one, uh, Sean, with the older Republicans that that are you know a, a, that made a commercial? It's just there's here it is. It's a report based on my friends. He doesn't have a chance. He's he blew it. John Dudley is talking about President Trump, who he supported four years ago, but won't again. He had everything. We we were so excited in the beginning, a businessman huh. to run our country like a business. And it hasn't happened. All he succeeded in doing was he juiced up the stock market, and uh, now that's gone to pot because of the coronavirus. Dudley is a retired banker and the face of a new Trump campaign worry, losing the senior vote amid summertime signs of anxiety from the beach to testing sites for soaring COVID cases. Here in Florida, people 65 and older made up 21 percent of the vote in 2016. Trump won that group by 17 points. Polls now show Joe Biden with an edge among seniors in key battleground states and nationally. 
For Trump, there is virtually no path to winning without Florida, which make places like the on top of the world retirement community critical terrain. On top of the world? I had to change parties. <laughs> I could not do this anymore. Paula oh. Schelling abandoned the Republican Party. Oh. Marsha Lund still considers herself a Republican, but not a oh. Trump one. I hope that I was wrong in not voting for him and that he would turn out to be a great president. But it didn't happen. <laughs> Even loyal Trump supporter Robert Bluffin wishes the president would do one thing. Our president should wear a mask because, yeah, you know, we're, we're doing it. We're, you know, it, it, it's a, 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 we're supporting him. On Florida's Gulf Coast, Trump won Pinellas County by one percentage point, the same margin he carried the state. Since then, Democrats have seen a new surge in voter registration. There are more Democrats now than there used to be in years past. Do you know any people who voted for Trump last time who are not going to this time? Uh, actually, I know several, yeah. including my son and grandson. Good luck. Happy Fourth, everybody. Be safe.